Well, hello, Sarah. Hi, everybody. So, we already did a vlog on Calico, but this is kind of like an update to that. Mm -hmm. So, the, the piece that we did before was um, before, during, and after our very first game of Calico. Since then, we have played a four-player game. We've played a couple more two-player games, and I have played two solo games as well. Um, and we thought we would just kind of revisit um, our thoughts on the game, and so we're going to do that now. So we'll start off with our thoughts about the four-player game. I actually personally felt like the four-player game was a little bit better of an experience than the two-player game because there is a tile draft um, in this game, and with two players you don't see as much turnover in the tiles that you can draft as if you play with more players and i felt like playing with four players you had a greater chance of possibly getting the tile that you were hoping to get in the tile draft so and i think that would probably be true in a three player game as well but we haven't played a three player game so i actually preferred this game at a higher player count than just with two um, and so for me, that was kind of the sweet spot for this game, especially because I did not prefer the solo variant at all. Um, I was kind of frustrated by the solo variant, actually. I played two games back to back, and both of them, I made it to the end of the game, but I didn't even bother scoring because I was attempting to reach certain parameters. Um, and I did not meet those goals at all. So I was like, I'm, I'm not even going to score because I didn't meet the, the main criteria of what I was aiming for. And the reason I was doing that is because there is um, a series of um, sort of like achievements that you can aim for in the back of the Calico rulebook. And you don't have to, but, um, but they're there if you want to. And if you're playing a solo variant, it kind of gives you something to strive for because there's not anything... You're not playing against an AI. There's no chart where, you know, if you if you reach X number of points, you're an expert calico quilter or anything like that. It's just like, play the game, what happens, happens. So it was really nice to have those sort of achievements to try to strive towards, especially in the solo game. Um, however, it was quite a challenge. And I, while I wanted very much to enjoy the solo play of this especially because it is like fairly quick to set up fairly quick to play a solo game um it's pretty easy i didn't have any fun with it i had zero amount of fun with the solo games i actually just ended up completely frustrated by it and i think part of the reason that it was so frustrating to me and part of the reason that i'm frustrated with the game itself and not necessarily with the way that i played is because both games I needed particular things to come out. I needed, you know, purple stripes or blue paisley or whatever to come out. And every single time I could not pull what I needed to pull in order to achieve the conditions um, for like winning a solo game. Um, and it was just because I couldn't get the tile that I needed. I could not pull um, the tile needed for me to be able to win the game. So I almost felt like it was the game was stacked against me um, in such a way that it was very difficult to win as a solo player. Now I've only played twice, um, but it was pretty frustrating to not feel like I had any chance of even winning at all. Um, and there are a series of those achievements that you can attempt. I think there are 10 of them. Um, but playing through two full games and not even being able to, to, to like hit one. Um, I understand that like some people may enjoy that kind of a challenge. You, you have to play a lot to be able to actually meet the, the criteria to mark off the little check mark in the, in the book and say, I, I was able to do that one. But to me, it was just a really, really frustrating experience to have everything lined up and be just waiting on the right pull and just not being able to get it. So for me, the solo play of this and even the two player was a little bit less than ideal. I didn't have any fun with with it at all. Um, with the three, maybe, and definitely with the four players, I think it's probably a better experience. But so far, I am feeling pretty 
I don't want to say disappointed, but I'm feeling pretty, um, like, I don't know if disgusted is too strong of a word, but it's just frustrating to me to feel like I am not going to be placed in a position where I can do well in the game. Um, and playing the solo variant in particular and the two player game felt like the challenge was almost insurmountable if you weren't just super lucky with what came out of the bag when you needed it to come out of the bag. So it's super cute. Um, the production is okay. The production quality could have been a little higher and honestly I was expecting it to be a little higher. Um, it's, it seemed like we just kind of paid for a game. It, it was only $29. We backed the Kickstarter. This was 29 bucks. That's a solid value. But based on But that's the, the thing. It felt like we only got because the Kickstarter came and we're like, well, what what was different from getting the Kickstarter and then getting the uh, you know, it from a store cuz there was the the Black Kitty Basically yeah, there's a promo set of black cats in this one um, that add a new um, a new piece that you can assign the quilt um, um, types to. I, I don't remember what that piece the is The pattern. Called. Yeah, the quilt pattern pieces. There's a new cat type where you can assign your quilt pattern pieces to those uh, and then place black kitties onto your quilt. But that's something that's going to be available to the public sooner or later. Probably. There's no such thing sometimes. It is sometimes. technically a Kickstarter exclusive, but it is just a small promotional piece. And that doesn't really mean so. things in, in recent light. Like, everyone says Kickstarter exclusive, but no, nothing on the company that wants to make money. But at the same time, it's like, it's going to come out. And there's also going to be more promos like that to come out. Because that's not something really hard to make. You know, I think regardless of whether or not they release the more, black cat still... promotional item as something that you can get on the secondary market or not, um, or even on the, the primary market, I think even if that becomes available, um, while $29 was great value for what you get in this box, um, based on the Kickstarter updates and stuff like that, I was expecting higher quality from this game, um, not just in the game play but also in the components as well. Um, and I was a little disappointed about the quality. And then the gameplay itself, I really do feel like um, they were very close to having a polished game here, uh, but I would say they're only about 90% of the way. They hmm. needed another 10% or so um, of final leg work on this to really get it polished and ready for the market. Um, I don't feel like they quite made it there, which is kind of disappointing. Um, so. All around, I would say I'm actually pretty disappointed in this one. Um, it's cute, looks fantastic, but it could have been higher quality components, especially based on what they said on their Kickstarter. Uh, and then the gameplay itself, I feel like there are some areas where the gameplay is is pretty disappointing. Yeah, because we even like house ruled it to pull one from the bag, and that was helpful yeah and so, it, it added even a little more to it so but. if you are familiar with the game or if maybe if you saw our first video uh it's a tile drafting and placement game and um there is a market of three tiles available on your turn and you have two tiles in hand so you play a tile from your hand you have one tile left in your hand and then from the three tiles available you draw back up so that you have two tiles in hand yeah um and i just feel like that math is off either i need to have more tiles in hand or there need to be more tiles available as replacements um and i i w when we did the blind draw we just tried to house rule it because we were, we were getting really frustrated with what we were able to do and what we were not able to do. And so we're like, okay, like we're getting really frustrated with this. We played through at least twice, I think, yeah. doing it according to the rules. Yeah. Uh, and then we were like, we we're just not having a good time with this. So we're like, okay, let's just try the house rule, even though it's really adamant in the rule book that you're supposed to, you know, do it exactly this way. We're like, let's just house rule it, see if that, like, in, you know, makes the experience any better for us. And it did a little bit, but it does change, like, the strategy and and how you think about things and stuff like that. But even doing that, I was like, okay, if these two tiles in my hand are absolutely garbage for me, if I can't place a good tile down on the board, um, and if what's face up available for me is also nothing that I need, 
all I'm doing is just drawing things and being disappointed. Uh, and we were, so we were like, okay, if we house rule it, we'll just see like if that makes the experience any better for us. And like Nick said, it did make the experience a little bit better, but it definitely changed the experience too. Blind drawing meant that there wasn't as much, you weren't forced to be, to work with what you had, right? You could, you could just blind draw something. And a couple of times I got closer to what I needed or I got what I needed than what I was going to get otherwise. So I understand that it does change the way that the game is played, but the frustration that we were feeling over never being able to get or very infrequently being able to get what we were hoping to get, um, that to me is maybe not a design flaw that feels a little harsh, but it just sucked all the potential fun out of this when you just constantly were frustrated or disappointed in in your options. Um, so and that is extremely evident in a one and two player game. Um, it was a little bit better with four players. Four players we definitely saw a lot more like circulation of tiles. Yeah. So again this game is like for three to four players, it's good. I, I think I think you could recommend it for three to four yeah. players. Really, like four players. Heck, if you even got a fifth or sixth player expansion, I don't know how that would you know mess with the the you know the math and all that with the game. But I mean, when you get or even just adding more uh, I'm not tiles to. to say I'm not willing to say anything beyond a three or four player game. Yeah, but I do that's, feel like that's all there is because we, yeah. and we've played that's, a three to four player game. That's the way it's designed to be, and that's what we've experienced. I do think it it's it's much much better at a higher player count, but for me in particular, it was very frustrating and not at all fun to play at the lower player counts of one or two players. And it's I'm, almost like it should have been a three to four, three to four, even five player game. It works. But it works just fine as a one and two player game. And even the one player, the solo game, is it's an interesting puzzle, but it's not satisfying in any way. It's not rewarding. It does not make me happy. Uh, and I'm mm -hmm. not I'm not willing to spend my time playing games that don't bring me joy in some way. And unfortunately, this one at a lower player count just absolutely doesn't do that for me. Right. So. Well, there we go. There's an update, uh, a little blog up vlog update of uh, Calico. All right. Well, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.